Hi, I'm Mark Schlar, the fertility expert, and if you're trying to get pregnant, then this video on improving sperm quality is for you. Keep watching the video, write your questions below, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all the information on how to get pregnant fast. Welcome to our webinar series on how to get pregnant faster. This is the second um, installment in a three-part series um, on how to uh, conceive and improve your reproductive health as fast as possible. My name is Mark Sklar and I'm the clinical director of a functional medicine clinic in San Diego called Reproductive Wellness that specializes in the detection and correction of some of the most challenging reproductive health conditions. We see very complex and complicated um, and intricate uh, health issues in our practice and most of the patients that we've seen have um, gone to other providers and have not yielded the results they've been looking for and they turn to us for that help. We utilize state-of-the-art techniques in the field of acupuncture, chiropractic, nutrition, massage therapy, exercise, nutritional functional medicine, and nutritional cleansing and weight loss. And we are board certified by the American Board of Oriental Reproductive Medicine to integrate Chinese medicine and um, Western medicine for the benefit of reproductive health and, and fertility. <clears throat> How to get pregnant faster. And as you can see from this slide, we've got three parts. The first part is egg quality, which we did first in, in a previous webinar. The second par part is on sperm quality. And the last part is on uterine environment and IVF. So it's important to recognize that one third of all fertility issues are due to male factors. And then there's another third actually, or just slightly less than a third, that is due to both male and female issues. So theoretically, about 50% of all fertility issues are male related or um, have some contributing issues due to male factors. So it's very easy um, to focus on the female side of uh, fertility and improving egg quality and uterine environment. But if we don't address this, which is often overlooked, potentially you're just wasting time and money. Um, so we do encourage everyone to get uh, tested and have a semen analysis done as quickly as possible in the process just to rule that out. And that should be done by a trained urologist who specializes in male fertility. So the main reasons for poor sperm quality, um, and that goes into either poor count, um, sperm count, sperm motility, which is the way sperm, uh, the sperm swim, and sperm morphology, the shape, uh, one head, one body, one tail is ideal, and any variation of that is considered abnormal. So, um, and we do have a previous uh, um, video that talks about the differences and, and the intricacies around um, uh, semen analysis. So here, the main issues that we're looking at are one, medical conditions such as infections, STDs, ejaculation issues, hormonal imbalances, potentially celiac disease, any environmental toxins, which do get overlooked quite frequently, such as heavy metal exposure like mercury, um, overheating um, due to um, a, uh, you know, a work environment, um, industrial chemicals. If you work for uh, a uh, electrical company and you're always exposed to um, high voltages, things of that nature. And then lifestyle habits such as alcohol consumption, drugs, tobacco, emotional stress, and weight. These all, all these factors need to be addressed and managed properly. We do recommend that you seek out a healthcare provider in your area um, who specializes in reproductive health and, and natural treatments to help guide and maneuver you through this process to assessing your reproductive health and um, putting you on the right track. Now, we're going to focus on how to improve your sperm quality, and we're going to focus on the three main areas that um, that potentially are easier to implement at home, nutrition, natural supplements, and, and potentially acupuncture. So the first thing we're going to focus on is nutrition. <clears throat> how to improve your sperm quality. The 
we're going to separate these into two categories, the things to avoid and the things to um, enhance or improve. So we want you to eliminate all processed foods. Ideally, we want you to have a, a whole food, uh, fresh diet um, and eliminating all processed foods, junk foods, um, most things that are packaged have some sort of processing to make them last longer. Um, so I read something the other day, it says uh, the longer shelf life it has, the shorter lifespan you have. So I think that's a good rule of thumb to use in, uh, in assessing what kind of food you're choosing. Uh, so no fast food. Um, refined sugars are horrible. We'll go into this in, in, in a, a subsequent slide, but basically we want you to avoid refined sugars, um, dairy, trans fats, and artificial fats, coffee, alcohol, sodas, and artificial fruit juice. We do want you to increase and enhance um, and spend more time on vegetables, slow carbs, hormone-free protein, um, preferably actually grass-fed protein, water, and good healthy fats. So going into these topics a little bit more in detail, um, I'm going to go over the refined sugars in a subsequent slide, but basically any processed, refined, heavily refined sugars we want you to avoid. If it doesn't come from a natural um, uh, whole food product, like a fruit or a vegetable, and or it comes from that but it's been heavily processed, we really want you to avoid that as much as possible. Sugar is probably one of the worst things we consume on a daily basis as a uh, culture. And um, uh, you know, my belief is that the world has been dramatically uh, addicted and attached to sugar um, over the centuries, which makes our genes and our cells change and, and crave sugar. So we really want to eliminate that. Coffee and alcohol is a you know slippery slope. I mean, many people are addicted or attached to either one of those two things. I could say that moderate coffee or alcohol consumption is okay if the quality is okay. So for sure, if you're going to drink coffee, it should be organic. Um, <clears throat> and um, and I prefer that it's not decaffeinated. Decaffeinated, most decaffeination processes, unless they um, are done with uh, high amounts of chemicals. And so then you start, you consume those chemicals and that leads into the you know chemical exposure category that we discussed earlier. So there's really only one way, which is a, a triple water filtration that decaffeinates the bean. And it should say that, or, or anyone who purchases that sort of coffee will know, and they'll be able to, they usually market that or advertise that, so you can ask for that. But if you're not drinking that type of coffee, decaffeinated coffee, then I do recommend regular coffee, but just in very small amounts and infrequently. Um, preferably if you can do it is to avoid coffee as much as possible and then alcohol consumption really needs to be minimized dramatically i mean most men do consume quite a bit of alcohol and they binge on their alcohol consumption so they might have a little bit here and there during the week but on the weekends they consume quite a bit of alcohol so um i do want it to be moderate um, which means you know two to three times a week you can have one maybe two um alcoholic beverages at a time. And I, ex with no exception, I want you to eliminate um, beer. Beer is horrible for, for all my patients. I love beer personally, but I don't, I never drink it um, because it's, um, it's horrible for the body and it causes um, and contributes to long-term chronic health issues. Slow carbs. So let me first start by saying this. Ideally, I would love for all my patients to get off of all grains, okay? That being said, that's not usually possible. So I want you to eat better grains. So avoid all white flour and white, um, white rice, um, preferably eating more of the brown rice or quinoa. Um, some slower carbs and better carbs are um, sweet potatoes and yams and squashes. Um, which are, are awesome, and I definitely in, um, encourage everyone to have have those. Um, and then we'll go into fats in just a, another slide, but really healthy fats are really, really important. And the one key thing I want you to take away from this is stop eating non-fat or low-fat products. Those are, have been processed to eliminate the fats. And if you're eating the right foods, then you're also consuming healthy fats, and healthy fats are essential for hormone regulation in the body. 
and then most of us are dehydrated. So we need to be eating uh, or consuming, excuse me, about half our body weight in ounces when it comes to water. And that water needs to be mineralized and you can easily get some sort of, um, you need to filter your water, but then you need to add the minerals back in. You can easily get some sort of liquid minerals to replenish your water of the, of the minerals that were depleted in the filtration process at the store. So going into healthy fats and, and cooking oils a little bit more um, specifically, you know, I'm going to start at the bottom of this slide, which is the oils that we don't want to consume. I want to stay away from safflower oil, sesame seed oil, canola oil, um, corn oil, especially soybean oil, especially walnut, grapeseed, vegetable shortening, um, sunflower oil. These are all horrible for us and they're all chemically produced and processed um, and they're not, you know, naturally made. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, most of us cook with olive oil and olive oil is an excellent healthy fat for us. It's just not intended to be cooked at high temperatures. It, um, it has a low smoke point and is instable at high temperatures, so it changes the structure, the chemical structure of the oil. So we recommend um, for low heat, very, very low heat, but essentially raw cooking, so adding to salads or dressings afterwards, is avocado oil, um, olive oil are my two favorite, and then if you needed to, macadamia nut oil or peanut oil, but my two favorite of that list is avocado oil and olive oil. And then my ones to primarily use are um, not only for high heat, but just as an overall use throughout the kitchen is coconut oil, which is phenomenal. Uh, butter, there's absolutely nothing wrong with butter and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Butter is great. And I uh, knew someone who once, whose uh, boyfriend was a chef and he used to refer to butter as, um, as love, he cooked with love. So I love that saying, and I think that that's uh, essential for uh, for cooking because if you use the right butter, which is um, um, grass-fed, pasture-grazed, pasture-raised butter, then you are using the right butter. Um, and then another item that's really good for cooking with is beef fat, bacon fat, pork fat, duck fat. They'll have um, assuming that all of those things are grass-fed, that you have um, really nutrient-dense, um, high essential fatty acids in the fats, and um, they help reduce inflammation in the body. Now, sweeteners are horrible for us. So I really want you guys to try to eliminate, and I encourage you all to go on a sugar detox. Um, and so with this, I, I want you to focus on only natural sugars, but those should only be used in moderation. Um, date sugar, brown sugar, cane sugar, um, the uh, fruit juices, honey, maple syrup, but my favorite is really stevia. And if you need something, it should really be stevia that you're using um, in moderation. The others can be used as well. Definitely stay away from all of those artificial sweeteners that make everything low fat. Um, and, and no sh sugar that they use in all these diabetic products. Um, they're nonsense and they're horrible for you and long-term they will kill you. Um, natural but not really recommended are agave, barley malt, brown rice syrup, caramel. Corn syrup is horrible for us, fructose is horrible for us, and fruit juice concentration or concentrate is horrible for us as well. So natural supplements to improve uh, sperm quality. That's what we're going to go on to next. So we're going to go through a series of slides having to deal with nutritional supplements. Um, vitamin C is great. I usually recommend uh, 2,000 milligrams per day in divided doses, so 1,000 in the morning, 1,000 in the evening. The um, labels on the, the products that you see on the right are not necessarily the ones we recommend, just to give you a visual on uh, on vitamin C. Um, vitamin E, 800 IUs or international units per day. Beta carotene is important at 1,000 IUs per day. And you should find the vitamin E and the beta carotene in those levels in most um, decent, good multivitamins. Uh, selenium should be taken separately. 
um, at 200 micrograms per day, and the same with zinc at 60 microgram, uh, milligrams per day in divided doses. Um, zinc has the potential to upset the stomach, uh, so try dividing up the, up the dosage. B12 is great. Uh, it helps with uh, cell replication and at least 1,000 milligrams per day. Um, we've spoken about essential fatty acids, so even though I encourage you to eat a lot of essential fatty acids in your diet, I do want you to have um, uh, fish oils in your, um, in your supplement regimen, and I do recommend 2,000 milligrams per day. My, my favorite brand is Nordic Naturals. And then um, L-arginine, again, shows great um, benefit for improving cellular replication. It also, as an added bonus, helps with, um, with maintaining erection. And um, about two to 4,000 grams per day. Um, if you're going to do 4,000, then do 2,000 in the morning, 2,000 in the evening. I tend to start with the lower dose before I, I upgrade to the higher dose. And then L-carnitine is great for if there's an issue with sperm motility. And then I would recommend um, about 1,000 milligrams per day for that. And then acupuncture. You know, acupuncture we find to be um, not only essential, but super, super effective for making changes with sperm quality. Researchers found five weeks of acupuncture treatment reduced the number of structurally abnormal um, sperm and increased the overall number of normal sperm in a group of men with infertility. And by that, we're talking about morphology here. Um, and they found that um, acupuncture improves sperm production, so sperm count, improves sperm movement, which is sperm mo motility, and then improves structural health of the sperm, which is sperm morphology. Now, when we start talking about these things, the easiest to change is sperm count, the hardest to change is morphology. And once we start getting into morphology, we do um, recommend at least three months of treatment to make long-term effects, and that's um, because of spermatogenesis. Don't forget that this is a three-part video series to teach you how to get pregnant faster. Watch How to Get Pregnant Fast, Part 1, Improving Egg Quality, and How to Get Pregnant Fast, Part 3, Improving Your Uterine Environment, by clicking the videos to the right. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Fertility Expert, for more tips on how to get pregnant fast.